Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to another episode of your favorite algorithm channel. My name is Ryan Powers, and today I'm going to be taking you through Leak Code 46 permutations. So let's introduce the problem. Given a collection of distinct integers, return all possible permutations. Well, that was a pretty short description, <laughs> but uh, let's take a look at the examples here. So uh, the input is going to be a set of numbers uh, of distinct integers. So one, two, and three. And we need to return all the possible permutations in an array of the like possible arrangements of these numbers, right? So uh, one, two, and three. Well, there's six possible arrangements, right? There's one, two, three. There's one, three, two. There's two, one, three. There's two, three, one. Three, one, two. And three, two, one. Right? This is, uh, this is probably the smallest example that we could give that actually kind of gives you an idea of like, what's happening. Um, if we did four, it would get exponentially larger, which is just a hint at what the time complexity of this problem is actually going to be. But as always, I uh, encourage you to try the problem on your own first. And if you get stuck or you uh, just want to see how I solve the problem, then come and check out the video. Otherwise, if you're ready to get started, come with me to the whiteboard. On the screen here, I have our number, our number set here. So these are the numbers we need to make all of our permutations with. So we have the number one, two, and three. So what I want to do here is we're going to use recursion to solve this problem. So what I want to do is I want to draw the recursive tree, and I want you to follow along with the execution of this function. I'm going to talk through the execution of this function, um, keeping track of our variables. And, and I want you to see if, um, while following along with this, uh, this recursion tree, if you can kind of construct how this tree is, um, or how the, construct the code that this tree is representing. So let's go through how this recursion tree is building itself, uh, talking through the execution of, um, of the, uh, the recursion tree in general. And, and I want you to see if you can construct this, uh, this function based off of this recursion tree. And this is what I do every time I build a recursive function. Um, I draw the recursion tree. I draw the recursion pattern of how, how this uh, tree might be constructed. And if I can get myself all the way to, the, to every single answer, then, and I can draw the tree, then I know I can write the function, right? It's just a matter of getting the order of the calls in, in, the, right, um, in the right order. So let's go through the recursion tree, and I want you to see if you, can, uh, if you can create the function based off this recursion tree. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to iterate over this array. And at each, um, at each iteration, we're going to be taking, taking a number and adding it to our set, and then we're going to remove that number from our possible, possible numbers to use. This array represents the possible numbers that we can use, right? So we're going to take one, and then we're going to remove it from our possibilities, okay? So uh, at each iteration, we're gonna grab a number and then remove it from the array. So let's start with the number one here. We're gonna iterate over this array, where i is equal to zero, and we're gonna take one. And we're going to remove one from our, uh, our possible numbers we can use. So we're just gonna be left with two and three. Well, so now we're going to be iterating over this array here, two and three, right? So we'll start at the first position where i is equal to zero, and we'll take two, and we'll push it into our, our number set, right? And we need to remove it now from the numbers that we can use. So now we just have three. So now we're going to iterate over this array, making a call to our permutation function, where i is equal to zero, and we're going to push three in, and we need to remove it from our possible numbers we can use. Well, here's our base case, right? Our array now of numbers we can use is empty. So we cannot, we have no more numbers we can use. So we know we can return from this function call. But before we do that, we want to push this into our answers array. So now we have an answer of one, two, and three. And we're going to return from this call here where we have no more numbers left to use, bringing us back into the execution context of this function call where we had an answer set of one and two and a num uh, an array of numbers we can use of just three. But well, we had already iterated over that array where i is equal to zero. So we are not going to iterate anymore. We're going to return from this function call back up to the execution context where we just have one in our number set and two and three are the numbers that we have to use. Well, we had just iterated over where i is equal to zero. So now we'll increment i. Now i is equal to one. So we'll add three into our number set, removing three from the numbers we uh, can, can use. And now we will iterate over this uh, numbers array where we have two to use. So we'll iterate over that array where i is equal to zero, taking that first number and we'll push it into our uh, number set. 
Well, we need to remove it from the numbers we can use. So now our, the numbers we can use is empty. So we can return from this function call. But before we do that, we want to push our answer of 1, 3, and 2 into our answers array. So now we're going to return from this function call, returning into the execution context where we had 1 and 3 as our uh, answer set, as our number set, and we had 2 as our numbers we can use. Well, i is equal to 0, so we've already iterated over that, uh, that value. We have no more iterations to make. So we'll return from this function call back up to where we just have one in our answer set and we have two, two and three as numbers we can use. Well, i is equal to one in this execution context, so we cannot iterate anymore over uh, this array. So we'll return from this function call back up into the original call to our function where i is equal to zero and we still have one, two, and three as the numbers that we can use. So we will iterate, uh, we'll increment i and we will uh, push two into our number set and we'll remove it from the possible numbers we can use. So now we have one and three as the numbers we can use. And we will uh, iterate over this array. So i is equal to zero, and we'll take that first number, which is one, and we'll push it into our number set and remove it from the numbers that we can use. So now we just have one number left in our numbers array. So we'll iterate over that, so i is equal to zero, and we'll push that into our uh, number set and remove it from the numbers we can use. Well, our numbers we can use is now empty, so we'll return from this function call. But before we do that, we'll push uh, the number set 2, 1, 3 into our answer set. We'll return from this call back into the execution context where we just had 2 and 1. And we can't iterate anymore over this numbers array. i was equal to 0. If we, incre we increment i, we have no more numbers to look at. So we'll return from this function call back up to the execution context where we have 2 in our number set. And 1 and 3 is the numbers we can use. Well, i was equal to zero in this execution context, so we can increment i, and we can now push three into our number set, removing it from our possibilities of numbers we can use. So now we will iterate over this number set here, or this uh, um, possible numbers array, where uh, we just have one item. So i is equal to zero, and we'll push that into our number set and remove it from the possibilities of numbers we can use. Well, now this is empty, so we'll push this into our answers and return from this function call. Back to the execution context, where we had two and three in our number set. So we'll return from this call back up to the execution context where we just have two in our number set. Well, i is equal to one here. We can't iterate over this array anymore. So we'll also return from this function call back up to our original call to this function where i is equal to one. And the number possibilities are one, two, and three. Well, we can increment i, so we'll do that i is equal to 2, so we'll take 3 and we'll remove it from our possibilities. So now we can, uh, our number of possibilities are 1 and 2. So we'll iterate over that, where i is 0, passing in the number 1. So now we have 3 and 1. We need to remove 1 from our possibilities. So now we just have 2. So we can iterate over that, where i is equal to 0, pushing 2 in to our number set and removing it from our possible numbers we can use. Well, now we can push this answer into our answers array and return from this function call. So we'll move back up into the execution context where we just have three and one as our number set and we can't iterate anymore. So we'll return from this function call back up to where we just have three in our number set. Well, i is equal to zero. We can iterate once more. So we'll increment i and we'll push two in to our possibilities of numbers we can use. We need to remove it from our number set. Now we just have one. So we'll iterate over that, pushing three in to our number set. So now we have three, two, and one. The numbers we can use are exhausted, so we can push this into our uh, answers. Um, we can push this into our answers uh, array. So let's do that really quick. <laughs> so now we have three, two, and one. Okay. So now we've used. Uh, so now we will return from this function call um, where we. Uh, terminated here with an empty empty array of numbers. We'll return from this function call here where we just have three and two, we can't iterate anymore. And we'll return from this function call here at the top where we just have three because i was equal to one, we can't iterate anymore. And we'll return all the way back up to the top of our tree where we have one, two, and three. And i is equal to two, we can't iterate anymore. So we will finally return from this uh, original call our answers, our answers array. So, I hope that was a helpful depiction for you of kind of what the recursive strategy of this function is. Um, and now I think it would be useful to just go over a little bit of the time complexity. So what's the time complexity of this problem? Well, the time complexity of this problem is a big O of uh, n factorial, right? 
And why is it n factorial? Well, the first the first time we have three numbers in our um, in our answer in our possible numbers we can use. So we have to make a function call for every single one of the possible numbers, right? So that's going to be three. So we're going to make three function calls. So each one of these function calls is now going to have to make a function call for each one of the leftover items in uh, in the possible number set, right? So that's going to be two. So that's going to be three times two function calls. So we have one, two, right? So each one of these is going to make two function calls. So we have these two function calls here. And then we're done, right? We're done uh, accumulating them because there's only one left. So there's only going to be one more function call made for each one of these, um, for each one of these items, and, and we're done. But you can imagine if we started out with the number four, well, each one of those would make uh, n minus one function calls, right? Which would be three, which would then make n minus one function calls, which would be two, which would then make n minus one function calls, which would be then one, right? So you can see how this, uh, how this grows factorially, right? So the answer here is uh, six. We have six answers here, right? But if we had, um, six if we had uh if we were if we we're doing the number four well we would have four times three which is 12 times two which would be 24 so we would have 24 answers right so uh you can so this is a pretty terrible time complexity but there's no other way to grab all the permutations of this problem anyways uh so now that we kind of understand the strategy for solving this problem um, let's go ahead and see how we would implement this recursion tree in code. We don't need any helper functions today to build this permute function. We'll build all the functionality that we need inside of this recursive call to this permutation function or permute. So I have added a couple of extra variables here. I've added an array variable, which is going to be initialized to an empty array. I've added an answers uh, variable, which is just going to be equal to our answers. Um, or is just going to be an array that houses all of our answers. So we'll be pushing our answers into this array. We're going to initialize it to an empty array. So when do we want to push an answer into, uh, into our answers array? Well, we know that if we don't have any numbers left to choose from, if num.length is, is zero, if it's falsy, then we know that we have exhausted all of our possible um, nums, right? So we can then push an answer into our answers array. So let's start there. So if, uh, n if not, right, if not nums.length, so if, num, if not nums.length, if nums.length is zero, then we want to um, push, uh, push into our answers array a copy of our current uh, set of numbers, which is going to be represented by the uh, array variable. You know what, let's change that to uh, set, to number set. So, um, Let's do set, we'll call it set. So this is our current um, set of numbers. So what do we want to do if this is not the case? If nums.length is truthy, meaning we still have numbers left to use, well, we want to iterate over them, right? So we can uh, create a loop. So we'll let i be equal to zero. And then while i is less than nums.length, well, we want to iterate. So what do we want to do inside of this loop? Well, the first thing we want to do is we want to uh, copy. We want to remove remove the current or remove the current number, right? We want to remove the current uh, number from our nums. So we can create a const because we don't want to mutate our current uh, array of nums. We want to pass in a copy um, so that we aren't mutating our current number set because we're going to be removing numbers from them at every uh, function call. So we'll create a const called new nums and we'll set that equal to um, nums.filter. So we want to remove the uh, current index. So we'll say index and we'll just return that index does not equal i. So we'll grab all the numbers that don't have that current index. So that will filter out all of those values. And then we want to do what? We want to push in the current number uh, into our answer set. So we'll do answer.push. 
and we want to push in nums at i. Okay, so now we've pushed in our current number that we've chosen, um, and then we want to make a recursive call to our permute function. So we'll call permute, and we will pass in our new nums with the removed number. And then we also want to pass in our current uh, set of numbers, which is going to be set. We renamed that. So it's going to be set. So we want to pass in our set of numbers. And then we also want to pass in our answers. OK, so that is going to take care of all of our recursive calls. But what do we want to do once we return? So what's our base case? Our base case is we have no more numbers to iterate over. So we can handle that by just returning the answers at the end. So what happens when we iterate through all of these numbers and we return from this function call? What do we want to do after we return from this function call? Well, we are um, using this set to, uh, to keep track of our answers. So we're pushing in a number before we make the function call, but we want to remove that number. We want to remove that number after we return from that function call. So if we had just used the number, if we were starting with the number one and we had an answer set of two and three left, we use the number two, we push in the number two. When we return from that final function call, we want to pop the number two out and then, and then do a function call where we use uh, three as the second number, right? So we want to do one, two, and we want to do one, three. So we need to pop that number out. So set.pop the last number out so we can add the next number in. Okay, so this is basically it. This is taking care of all of the logic for, uh, for solving this problem. So let's kind of go through what we did here. So we check to see if we have any numbers left to use. If we don't, that means we know we can push in an answer to, uh, to our answer array. Now, we're going to loop over the current num set. So the current, uh, current nums, right? And we're going to remove the current, uh, the current um, number and then we're going to push in. Uh, we're going to push in the that current number that we're on, and then we're going to make a recursive call with that updated uh, numbers that we have to choose from, and then our uh, set of numbers that we have picked so far, and then our reference to our answers. Okay, and then when we return from these function calls, we're going to pop out that last that last uh, that last item, and uh, and add the next number in. Uh, we're going to iterate and then add the next number in. Okay, let's see how we did. Okay, let me and let's submit this. See if we have any bugs. Oh, looks like we do have a bug. Okay, what do we got here? Unexpected token. Mm, I forgot a dot here. Okay, let's try this again. All right, okay, 88 milliseconds, 71%. That's pretty good, I'm happy with that. Let's check out, um, let's see what the distribution looks like. Okay, so we can see that the distribution here is pretty tight. I mean, it's a runtime of factorial. So if you did solve this problem, you had the same crappy runtime as, uh, as everybody else, um, but Anyway, uh, I wanted to cover also the possibility that the space complexity you could probably also represent as factorial. Uh, I have seen some uh, differing opinions on whether or not you include the answer as part of your space because you're not using extra space. Um, but the, the runtime complexity for sure is factorial. So it's a pretty terrible runtime anytime you're doing a permutation problem. So permutation string, permutation numbers, Whatever, anytime you're getting all arrangements of something, you are doing factorial work, right? So uh, that is kind of the important takeaway of this problem. Anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you learned something, and I hope to see you in the next one.